this video, we will be looking at landing procedures in the Mirage 2000C, specifically those performed in visual flight rules conditions. We will touch briefly on the principles of the pattern approach, the Mirage's APP approach mode, HUD symbology used to guide you to a successful landing, appropriate speeds and angles of attack, and some other additional features of the Mirage 2000C that can help improve your landing. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the ever graceful Mirage 2000C and today we'll be looking at landing this awesome aircraft. Now personally, I think the Mirage is one of the easier aircraft to land. Uh, its APP approach mode gives you all the information you need and it is generally easy to monitor everything from the heads up display. We're over the beautiful Mediterranean Sea just off the south coast of Cyprus and we're going to put her down at RAF Akrotiri. Uh, to begin with, I'm simply going to put her down after flying the pattern approach without giving too much instruction, and then we'll go over some of the more technical aspects in more detail in a few more landings. So hopefully you are familiar with a pattern approach. Uh, when we are in visual flight rules conditions like now, good visibility and I can see where the aircraft is actually going, the pattern approach is the usual method for landing. I've turned towards Akrotiri and coincidentally I'm lined up with the runway, I didn't plan that, that's just serendipity, and I'm going to fly the full gamut of stages of the pattern approach, which are overhead brake, turn into a downwind, turn into a base turn, and final approach. So let's see how we get on. I'm currently flying overhead uh, in the direction of the runway at approximately 2,000 feet. I've got my radar altimeter switched on so I can see that in the top right of the hood. And I'm going to now execute a fairly sharp left-hand turn around about 60 degrees, allowing me to bleed off speed, which you can see there in the top left-hand corner of the HUD, 350 knots, and decreasing. I need to continue this turn until I'm at the reciprocal of the runway I wish to land at. Now, I know I want to land at runway 28 at RAF Akrotiri, and the reciprocal of 28, if I minus 18 from it, is 10. So I'm going to continue this turn until I'm at the bearing of runway 10. In other words, a heading of 100 degrees. If I look out to the left, I can see that I'm now parallel to the runway, and I'm just going to fly in this, what is called the downwind leg. I'm going to allow myself to decrease in altitude slightly and continue to decrease in speed. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to extend my downwind leg a little bit longer than I normally would, uh, just for I've got some time to talk. So we're going to wait until the threshold of the runway is lined up with the edge, the leading edge of the wing, roughly about there, and execute a similar turn to what I did before, about 60 degrees. and again allow that speed to bleed off. I'm going to turn back onto the runway heading, which was 28, 280 degrees. I am still a little bit fast here, so I may need to apply some uh, air brake. But hopefully when we get ourselves back onto a heading of 28, we are lined up with the runway. We'll apply the air brake and lower the landing gear once below 260 knots. Now the first trick is to get your velocity vector indicator, the small plane icon on the hood, on the threshold of the runway. That's all we'll do in this particular landing. So there we go, velocity vector indicator is on the threshold of the runway. And we're going to slow her down By default, at 200 feet, the radar altimeter is displayed in the center, and roughly 50 feet just after, I'm going to do a little bit of flare just to arrest my descent, slowly bring the throttle down, and allow her to touch down. Maintain the angle of attack by placing the rotation marker still on the horizon. And once I've decreased to about 100 knots, 
allow the nose wheel to dip and touch the ground, and then begin to apply the wheel brake. I recommend you pulse the wheel brake rather than holding it on to avoid skidding. Switch on nose wheel steering, and you're ready to taxi. Job done. Now technically that last landing was horrendous, so this time we're going to do it again, but this time pay due attention to all the things we need to. Having flown our pattern and on final approach, we're going to switch on the APP approach mode on the PCA. There are three things on the heads-up display we need to look out for. The first is the velocity vector indicator in the center there. The next are the acceleration chevrons. This gives me an indication of whether the plane is traveling at a constant speed and my angle of attack brackets, which tell me whether or not the plane is in the correct attitude for landing. For the perfect landing, we need all three of these to be aligned laterally. So we're going to make minute changes with our throttle and control stick until all three of these things line up. Let's get going. The first thing you want to do is still put the velocity vector indicator on the threshold of the runway, and you want it to be at approximately two and a half to three degrees downwards. So we can see the horizon line, you can see the minus five degrees indicator on the pitch ladder, the dashed line. This all looks correct. We need to get our acceleration chevrons and our angle of attack brackets lined up. So we're going to decrease the throttle, and you can see now that the chevrons are within the brackets, oh, just slipped out, and we're going to make adjustments to the throttle to maintain them in that position. We're also going to make any minor changes with the control stick needed, so that as you can see now, the velocity vector indicator, the brackets and the chevrons are all lined up. This means that I'm on the perfect approach for the runway. Maintain the approach. Our radar altimeter has appeared in the center of the hood next to the velocity vector indicator. So I'm going to hold this, monitoring the center with my eyes. And then just below 50 feet, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of flare just to slow my descent down, reducing the throttle and allowing her to touch down. Maintain that angle of attack. We can see the upturn T rotation indicator. Keep that next to the horizon. And when we get down to around about 100 knots, we can allow the nose wheel to dip. Apply the brakes. You probably heard an alarm there. That was the Mirage warning me that my trim was not reset. To reset it, I just need to press the autopilot standby switch twice. Okay, a similar approach again, except this time I'm going to use the drag chute rather than the wheel brakes to bring me to a halt. The drag chute is fitted as standard and is operated by the small white lever on the left hand side of the cockpit. I recommend you bind this to a key. So here we go, uh, velocity vector is good, uh, glide slope is good, but I'm a little bit fast. So let's bring that throttle down. My chevrons are now in line with my angle of attack brackets. I'm gonna make some small incremental changes to keep them there and get everything lined up. The typical landing speed is around about 140 knots, but as long as the chevrons are within the brackets, which is lined up with the velocity vector icon, you're on the perfect approach. So coming over the threshold now, slightly below 50, little bit of flare, allow it to touch down, maintain the angle of attack for aero braking, and once the nose dips, Deploy the chute, and you'll see that your airspeed rapidly decreases without the need for the brakes. This example is a little bit different. Uh, we haven't flown the pattern, 
uh, so we're not lined up perfectly with the runway. Uh, we're sort of flying obliquely to it, but we're close enough to attempt a landing. We're going to look at some of the additional features of the Mirage that allow you to make a landing in this manner, and we're going to use the INS system. We looked at the PCN navigation control panel in a previous video, and we're going to program the location parameters for the airfield. So RAF Akrotiri, the parameters are there. Let's select any waypoint, let's say number two, by pressing prep and zero two. We're then going to input the latitude, longitude, altitude, and a few other things into this. So let's select latitude and longitude, LG. Select the left parameter with the uh, left plus. It's a north and then input the information that we have. Press insert to enter it. Do the same for the longitude, so the right parameter, which is an easting, and type in the coordinates required. Change the parameter switch to the altitude, and we'll input that, which we're told is 69 feet. Plus 69. Insert. Now we have some other parameters that we haven't looked at yet. The first one that we're going to look at is a turn to the left, RHDS in the English cockpit. RH stands for runway heading and DS stands for desired slope. So we're going to input the true heading of the runway. And now there's various sources uh, that you can get this information from. You can actually get it from the F10 map simply by drawing a line using the ruler tool along the center of the runway like so and as you can see there it's 286 magnetic but the bearing is 291 degrees true so we're going to input that into the PCN so on the left hand parameter the left plus to select it and then 291 decimal zero insert the second parameter on the right is the glide slope and this is typically done at three degrees so right select with the right plus zero three decimal zero and insert. To aid us getting onto the runway radial, we're also going to use the route desired, time desired option. In this case, just the route desired, which is the left hand parameter. And I want to fly towards the waypoint, which is the airfield, at the same bearing as the runway, so 291.0. All this information is now stored at waypoint two and to get it to interact with our navigation aids, we're gonna select destination waypoint zero two on the PCM. With waypoint two selected, we now have some additional information on the VTB heads down display. And we're gonna use RD, the route desired function to assist us. We'll just zoom in to a scale of 20 miles as indicated at the top there. And our destination waypoint, which is our airfield, is represented by this plus. If I press RD, route desired, I'm given some additional information of these two parallel lines. This represents the route or the alley that I need to steer the plane through in order to approach the airfield at the correct heading. To assist us with this, we've now got some additional symbology on the hood as well. These two vertical lines, which correspond to a guidance to that bearing. So we're going to fly our aircraft with the velocity vector indicator in the center of those two parallel lines, and that will steer us onto the correct heading. I've also set the airfield as a destination waypoint. I have some information here on the hood, which is telling me that it's 8.5 nautical miles to destination waypoint 2. So here we go, let's begin to slow her down. We're flying obliquely towards a radial that would intercept with the runway. Air brake on, bring our speed down. And we'll see that when we intersect with that radial, the two parallel lines on the hood will suddenly shift to the left and I'll need to execute a turn. There they go. So we're gonna turn very sharply to the left and chase those parallel lines, bring our velocity vector indicator back into the center. It should be around about 2.8. There they are. And this is 
roughly line me up with the uh, runway. So I'm going to switch over to approach mode by pressing APP on the PCA panel. And because I programmed those additional parameters into the uh, PCN, I now have some additional symbology on the hood. The first is this tick mark on the horizon line. This shows me the heading I need to fly so that I'm perfectly lined up with the runway and is useful in low visibility conditions that don't warrant an ILS landing. Check mark is in the center of my heading tip. I'm on the correct heading. The second piece of additional information are these two horizontal lines which represent the glide slope that we selected. So they're just another visual indicator of the three degree glide slope required for the perfect landing. So in this landing, we don't have three things to line up, we now have four. Let's drop our landing gear. And if we line up the velocity vector and the glide slope, first of all, on the threshold of the runway, and then make small adjustments so that our uh, chevrons and brackets all line up, we are again on the perfect approach. On the tarmac of the runway, you can see some white rectangles either side of the center line. This represents the touchdown area, and the three white rectangles together is the perfect touchdown point. Well, I hope that was useful for you. Please go out and try the Mirage 2000C for yourself. She really is a joy to fly. Do you do anything differently when landing? Let me know so we can learn together. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment, and share. But until next time, virtual aviators, I look forward to seeing you online. This is Reva saying, last call.